In this episode, we're looking at working in low light. Ooh, let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 63 of Understanding Darktable. I thought we'd take a look at a module that, to be honest, I've never held in high regard, but in its defense, I've never really spent a lot of time to get to know it or to work out what it was trying to do. It's called the Low Light Vision Module. And as the name would suggest, it is designed to mimic the properties of light when we as human beings observe a scene with low levels of illumination. Uh, I, I don't know enough about how the rods and cones in our eyes work, but I do understand that I think it's the cones we use for color perception and the rods we use for luminosity perception. And when we're in a low lit environment, we tend to use the rods more than the cones. And as a result, we perceive less color information because the cones aren't playing as big a role. I think that's how it works. So anyway, this low, vi low light vision module is designed to emulate those particular properties of light. So I've grabbed three images from my Sri Lanka holiday in 2019, and I did read the manual before I started this episode, and the manual suggests that you can use this module to convert images which were shot in the daytime and give them a bit of a nighttime look. I have to say, a couple of images that I tried, I wasn't really sold on the results. But where I did find the low light vision module to be effective was on images that were actually shot at night time, which sort of sounds a little bit counterintuitive. But anyway, let's dive on in, have a look at a couple of images. This first one is at Gawler Fort on the south coast of Sri Lanka. And as you can see, I was shooting the uh, light trails of the tail lights of passing vehicles as they went through this little tunnel. Now, as you can see from my history stack here, basically the first seven steps are what Darktable will apply to an image when you import it. I've applied a little bit of a tone curve in place of a base curve. I applied a little bit of local contrast to just give it a bit of pop. And there's a high pass for some sharpening. But other than that, it's pretty much straight out of camera. If you want to see it straight out of camera, we'll jump back to orientation. That's where it was. Uh, I haven't really done a whole lot to it. So let's call up the low light vision module and turn it on. And by default, without adjusting any of the parameters, straight away, yeah, yeah okay, it sucked out some of the warmth of the image, but I do feel as though that is more nighttime-like than it was without it. So, okay, that's open to interpretation. What I like, what you like, they can be two different things and there's nothing wrong with that. But let's look at the actual parameters of the module and see what we're working with here. If you've been a Darktable user for any length of time, you should by now be familiar with this graph-like interface. There are plenty of modules that use this. And as we can see from the text tips here, we've got dark on the left and bright on the right. That is referring to the level of luminosity of the pixels in your image. So if you want to modify the pixels which are dark so you know this big triangular shaped area up the top here this area over here on the left all of the dark pixels in the image then you would be working on the left side of this graph if you want to affect the lighter tones within the image those pixels which are lighter in luminosity then you would be working on the right hand side of the graph we've got day vision at the top and we've got night vision at the bottom. And as I said before, it really comes down to desaturation of color information. And we've got nodes at either end and four nodes in the middle, 
Now, like other modules that use this graph interface, you can simply grab a node and drag it downwards and you can drag subsequent nodes to create a curve of any particular type of thing you want to do to your image. There's some good presets that come with this module by default, and they're worth having a look at. So we go to the preset button and we'll choose daylight. And as you can see, that puts all of the nodes at the top. So everything is at full strength. If we turn that module off, that is pretty much unchanged. So the daytime preset, sorry, daylight preset, is essentially not creating any change whatsoever in your image. If we go to nighttime, that moves all of the nodes to the bottom and it pretty much renders our entire image as a duotone, which is essentially black through to shades of blue in this instance. And the reason it does that is, again, not my area of specialty, but the natural way in which we view light under low levels of luminosity is that everything starts to look a bit bluish. All right, you've been out under a bright moon and, you know, everything looks a bit bluish. So those are the two extremes of what this module can do. But I really like the night street presets, and there are three of those. If we go night street, if we look at that graph, we can pretty much work out for ourselves what's going on here. Our very darkest pixels are being completely desaturated and as we get a little bit lighter and lighter into the the brighter pixels within the image we are getting more and more of our saturation back now as i've said before if you have spent any time with dark table and you've seen these graphs before you would know by now that you can mouse over a node and using your mouse wheel you can contract or expand the area of influence of just that node. So if you shrink it right down to its smallest value, you will only be affecting a small range of luminosity values within your image. If you wind your mouse wheel back towards you and make it really large like that, then adjusting that node will affect quite a broad spectrum of the luminosity values within your image. Alrighty, and then down the bottom we have the blue shift parameter. It defaults to 30% and as you can see from the tooltip, it is there to represent the blueness in the shadows. So let's go back to that nighttime preset, which is pretty much all blues. And as you can see there, the blue shift is set to 50% and we have quite a lot of blue in our image. If we wind that back, our image gradually reverts to pure monochrome where it's just blacks and whites. All right, so let's jump on to the next image. This is an image of one of the elephants in the Perahara uh, parade or street festival in Kandy. And as you can see, I've done a little bit of uh, denoising on this image and again, applied a little bit of local contrast. Now, from a white balance point of view, this looks pretty good. But what I really like is that when I turn the low light vision module on, the blues and the reds both desaturate a little bit and I'm kind of liking the effect for nighttime images. I, I feel like it's a truer representation of the way I perceived the scene at the time that I was there. It's maybe a little bit too strong an effect. Uh, and if I wanted to tone that down, I could either move all of these six nodes to a little higher up the graph, or... I could simply go for a uniform mask and then just wind back the 
opacity of the mix. And that would allow me to do with one control what I would have had to do with six little nodes on the graph, which I probably would never have been able to place exactly where I wanted them. So that's probably the best way to just reduce the intensity of the effect if that's what you're after. I'm not going to bother with the third image. You get the idea by now. All right, so that is the low light vision module. Like I said, not a module I've ever spent any time with, but I can see myself using it going forward for any images that I have actually shot at night time, just to increase the realism, I guess. Uh, it doesn't need a lot of it, but I do like what it's doing. Okay, that will do it for this episode. Uh, once again, to my Patreon supporters, thank you for your continued support. You know how much that is appreciated. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, uh, feel free to hit the link, which will be down below. Uh, that will take you to the Understanding Dark Table page on Patreon.com. Uh, and you can choose a price point that works for you if you want to support the work that I do. All right, people, take care, stay safe, keep your social distance, and uh, I'll talk to you in the next one.